didn't fellow Toastmasters guess. In front of me here, I have two imaginary boxes. And they contain every laugh, every tear, every fragment of my life story about self-improvement. The first box contains the happiness, the days, the happier days that I have because of the effort and time that I put in. And the second box contains the past, the struggle, the pain. So let us look inside, shall we? I will share some stories, not all. I'm sure you don't want to know all of them. April 19, 2013, my parents are turning into the driveway after their weekly date. And I excitedly present to my mom my homemade chocolate chip cookies. She's like, wow, so cool. So good. How is your day? What do you have for dinner? And as she bites into it, I wait expectantly. And she goes, her face sours into an exclamation. My mom loves my baked goods, but she hates it when they are too sweet. And today was one of those days where I heard the lectures about why I shouldn't make sweet things too sweet and why I should listen to her. Otherwise, I should stop making these goodies. And then all I did was, all I could do was just receive it. I didn't know how to explain. I didn't know how to say anything. March 23, 2016, I remember. It was lunchtime. I was sitting at my dining table eating chicken rice that I took out from across the road. And someone asked me, where do you get that from? Mm, the, the store near the there. It's near the there, yeah. Very satisfactory answer, wasn't it? That evening, I heard my third brother sharing his concerns with my dad. He speaks like a seven-year-old. Oh, no worse than a seven-year-old. Seven-year-olds don't even speak like that. And what, how old is he now? Thirteen. The words cut so deep, it touched my spirit. In the first half of 2020, I was enrolled in Tomasic Polytechnic and I survived pretending to be able to go through with my presentations. And this was me at my, on the second day of rehearsals with my 54th take. Children, children are, every child is a bag. Every child is a... Let's hear that again, right? You didn't hear it from the start. Okay. Children, children, uh, every child 54. is a bag. Every because child is a... This recording speaks for itself. I had two eyes, a nose and a mouth, but no voice. And so, like a thirsty desert creature, I searched for a solution far and wide hoping for an end to this disappointing dryness. And then I found Toastmasters. Or should I say, I found Kin. <laughs> Have you met Kin? If you haven't met Kin, you should meet him. <laughs> now let's look in the second box. <laughs> Some stories we have from here. It was the 9th of October. Kin was sharing with us all how he had the lack of charisma trying to riz up girls with his high pitch. <laughs> but there he was, his, the words flowing like butter on a hot knife. If Toastmasters was the difference between him then and him now, this has to be the key. And so I joined the Toastmasters club. And like 
waves crashing on the shore, I relentlessly poured out my soul, my spirit into my speeches. Two consecutive speeches in a row, table topics at every meeting, ribbons at none. But I, I couldn't care less because it was about the journey, not the destination. And little by little, uncertainty turned into consciousness, into clarity of mind. And I began to believe in my capability. And so did my big brothers and sisters in Toastmasters. And here are some words that they shared with me that helped me throughout my journey. Past district director and Toast Grandmaster Michael Wee said, public Toastmasters doesn't just help you to speak well. It helps you to think well. Ah, <laughs> uh, we have a joke master, our brilliant mind, and a mentor to many Toastmasters, Terence Nunes. He said, you don't have to fit every all your hundred points of improvement in the two to three minutes given to you to evaluate someone's speech. And that touched me too. Finally, the one and the only Kin, he said, <laughs> oh, this is just a promotion for him at this point. He said, I'll, instead of seeing it as a problem, why not you look at it as an opportunity to grow and learn? And remember to have fun. If not, what's the point? <laughs> and I toiled for weeks into months, years, and finally, this happened. My friends, they were entertained by me. They began to give very interesting statements. Be quiet, the Toastmaster is speaking. I had earned their respect. <laughs> Some of my friends were more open. They said, hey, Zef, uh, you want to go out for dinner with us? Among all the interns, we like you the best. He is the most, one of the most sociable friends I've ever had. I, was, I became someone that they wanted to be around. One day, my lecturer even gave me control of the classroom to conduct a table topic session. I had earned their trust. And from the ashes of timidness and the lack of personality, I found a voice. A voice that I believed in. A vo voice that was worth listening to. Just yesterday, I went back in time to June 2023, not to listen to presidential news or refill the vibe of F1 hype, but to find myself and give him the advice that he needed to hear. All of us have these two boxes, one called graves and the other called gardens. And the only thing that is stopping you from turning your graves into gardens is not time, it is not money, it is not even your inability to perform, but it is a decision. A decision that you delayed in making, that you have to make today. If confidence is the thing that you want, then you have to say yes to opportunities that throw you out of your comfort zone. You, if you want to sound professional and be influential, listen to all the feedback that everyone is telling you. Turning the graves into gardens is a simple three-step process. First, you have to believe that you can turn your graves into gardens. Next, you have to behave like you can turn your graves into gardens. And you have been doing these two things very well. Finally, you need to work your graves into gardens. And this is where 
you need to work on. I, the three months ago, me was like, what? Where did you come from? I yeeted away. Thankfully, he listened to me. And I have been a Toastmaster for two and a half years. In the past three months, I've won almost half of all my ribbons. It's truth that I felt, okay, I felt like I had found the right path. I had found the right path, but I was drunk with the idea that I had found the right path and I was just sitting in it. I wasn't walking it. So my friends, fellow gardeners, don't sit at the sidewalk of your right path, no matter what it may be. Choose, be assured that you have found this right path and take your steps to walk forward in it. I cannot wait to walk together with you through your grave turn garden. Back to you. Thank you.